Let's talk about the most notorious gaming magazine in the world, Nintendo Power. Today on Retro Carnage. Let's go back. Let's go back to the year 1987. Dirty Dancing was in theaters, Whitney Houston was hot on the radio, cartoons were taking over, and a gallon of gas was cheap. And the gaming world? Well, it was on fire. With the success of the Nintendo Entertainment System's release in 1985, the NES was the hottest item on the market for kids. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. With Nintendo sales climbing, the company decided to give consumers a further insight on new games releasing. Starting in 1987, a newsletter called Nintendo Fun Club was created. The best part about this newsletter? It was free! In this newsletter, they discuss popular games and games that were planned for the near future. It offers tips and tricks, Nintendo video game news, and comics. This newsletter only lasted seven issues before being discontinued in favor of the Nintendo Power in 1988. Maps, contest, game reviews, and score blasting high adventure. Don't be helpless, we're in trouble! Come on. Order Nintendo Power. The now. first issue, dated July 1988, spotlighted the NES game Super Mario Bros. 2 on the cover. 3.6 million copies were published, with every member of the Nintendo Fun Club receiving one for free. The first Nintendo Power issue was jam packed with guides, tips, and secrets. The magazine was edited at first by Fun Club president Howard Phillips, himself an avid gamer. While the Fun Club news focused solely on games made in-house by Nintendo, Nintendo Power was created to allow for reviews of games produced by those licensed by Nintendo, such as Konami, Capcom, and the like. Quote from Howard Phillips, When we first launched the NES in 1985, we figured out very quickly that kids were just dying to get extra information about the games. Not just new games that were coming out, but also how to play them. Besides Nintendo's helping hand at solving games, they also had comics as well within each issue. Nintendo Power's mascot in the late 1980s and early 1990s was Nestor, a comic character created by Howard Phillips. After Phillips left the company, Nestor became the magazine's sole mascot. Early issues of the magazines featured a two-page Howard and Nestor comic, with then later replaced with a two-page Nestor's adventure, later reduced to one page, and eventually dropped altogether. Following the release of the Super Nintendo, the magazine featured lengthy, continuous comic stories based on Super Mario World and The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. After these stories ended, they were replaced by similar multi-issue stories based on Star Fox, Super Metroid, and later on N64 games such as Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, and Blast Corps. Comics based on the animated series of Pokemon and Kirby Right Back At Ya also made several appearances. Before Google, we had Nintendo Power, helpful guides to get you through difficult levels. Or you can rack up a hefty phone bill and call the Nintendo Help Hotline. The strategy guides were so useful, giving you tips, full page maps, and secrets within the games. In 1994, Nintendo Power sent an exclusive VHS tape and Betamax tape to many subscribers of their magazine. The first tape, titled Donkey Kong Country Exposed, was 15 minutes long, features interviews, game tips, and general hype towards Nintendo and Rare's soon-to-be killer app, Donkey Kong Country. Needless to say, the tape worked. The Donkey Kong Country was a smash hit in the 1994 Christmas season. In 1995, Nintendo brought us a journey through Yoshi's Island a second VHS Nintendo Power tape focusing on Yoshi's Island. The video followed a general style of the Donkey Kong Country video, complete with a Josh Wolf in a similar role. Nintendo would continue to do this style of promotion throughout the years to boost sales and to get consumers hyped for the future games. Another feature advertised in Nintendo Power's magazines was a wide variety of contests. Some of the most popular contests dealt with up-and-coming movies that were going to hit the theater soon. In Volume 77, published in October 1995, Nintendo offered one lucky winner a spot as an extra in the sequel to the smash hit action comedy The Mask. Production on the movies was halted indefinitely after Jim Carrey declined to reprise his role, which also meant that whoever won the contest was pretty much screwed. In 1990, Nintendo Power held a player's poll contest allowing you to set up a private screening of the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie for you and 25 of your friends. 
Because TMNT is one of my favorites, I wish I could have entered that contest when I was a kid. Besides the basic contest they offered, they advertised a bigger event named Nintendo World Championships of 1990. Live from Universal Studios Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Terry Lee Torok. The competition launched in 1990, touring 29 cities across the United States. It was based upon its namesake custom game cartridge for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Considered to be the most valuable NES cartridge ever released and one of the rarest on June 14, 2015, these contestants played a special Nintendo World Championships cartridge for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The cartridge contains three customized minigames based upon popular games such as Super Mario Bros., Rad Racer, and Tetris. The objective is to achieve a high score according to a custom scoring formula across all games, within a total time limit of 6 minutes and 21 seconds. The top winner in each age category were awarded $10,000 US dollars in a savings bond, a new 1990 Geo Metro convertible, a 40-inch rear projection television, and a gold-painted Mario trophy. Runners up in each age category received 1,000 US saving bond and a silver Mario trophy. Another popular section in the magazine would be the top 30 section. Nintendo Power would release a top 30 favorite games list in each issue. Usually the games showcased in this list would be the most popular games at the time, with high ranking games such as Super Mario Bros. 3, Zelda, and Mega Man, just to name a few. As the years continued in the 90s and more Nintendo systems were released, the list of games went from a top 30 to a top 20 or a top 10 giving each system its own top game list of the month's issue. Most heavy hitter titles stayed in the top ranked list for months at a time, like Zelda, A Link to the Past, staying in the top three games for 23 months in a row. Towards the end of the 90s, the top games list went from a two-page spread to one, as the format of the magazine was starting to change. On the more personal side of Nintendo Power, The Player's Pulse was a section which features letters to the editor submitted by readers. You would usually see pictures with fans with a new game that just released or fan art they created for Nintendo. They also showed off contest winners from previous issues, like this kid who won a trip to the NBA All-Star Weekend. With over 200 issues created of Nintendo Power, here are some highlights of my favorite issues of all time. Issue number 28. With Super Mario World showing on the cover, this is the first Super Nintendo game to be seen on the cover of the magazine. It's a staple in any gaming collection. Issue number 66. With the Donkey Kong Country series being some of my all-time favorites, this was a no-brainer. This issue gives you a 10-page spread showing off four different levels within the game. Issue number 80. The Nintendo 64 first debut in Japan. This issue released screenshots of the widely anticipated Super Mario 64. And issue number 100, the milestone issue in Nintendo Power history. This issue featured a top 100 games of Nintendo systems and all the top 100 most classic cheat codes. In early 2000, we started to see a change in Nintendo Power, a change that may be for the worst in future years. In July 2005, Nintendo Power created a new design to appeal to a limited gaming audience, including a new logo in article format. Along with a cosmetic overhaul came a greater focus on Nintendo fans, staff reviews and rumors milling, and a fan service including an expanded enhanced reader mail segment, known as the Pulse, and a revamped community section. Later, the magazine changed its focus from game strategies and cheat codes to mainly news, previews, and articles of upcoming games. Most people would say that this is the decline of the Nintendo power. On September 19, 2007, Nintendo officially announced that the large magazine publisher Future US will begin publishing Nintendo Power. The company's first official issue was released in October as issue 222. It was also revealed that circulation would increase to 13 issues a year, with the extra magazine being a holiday season bonus issue. Nintendo Power stopped making the bonus issue in 2011. In August 2008, issue number 231 was released to celebrate Nintendo Power's 20th anniversary. This issue included a list of top 20 games from each Nintendo's home and handheld consoles and the best of one of an unsuccessful Virtual Boy. On August 21st, 2012, Nintendo announced that it would not be renewing its licensing agreement with Future Publishing and that Nintendo Power would cease publication after 24 years. Nintendo Power's final issue was December 2012, Volume 285. The cover by sculptor Leslie Levings featured a clay models of Bowser and Mario promoting New Super Mario Bros. U, while paying homage to the Mario and Wart clay models which had promoted Super Mario Bros. 2 on the cover of Volume 1. The issue included a poster displaying every past Nintendo Power cover. 
The final issue would be December 2012. Senior editor Chris Hoffman stated that his staff would try to make the most memorable last issue. Nintendo reportedly did not actively participate in discussions to continue the magazine online. Shortly after it ended, a spiritual follow-up was printed in the name of Nintendo Force Magazine. This magazine was made by fanboys of Nintendo Power who has chosen to organize their own magazine featuring a talent coming everywhere from 1UP to Brawl in the Family. Former Nintendo Power editor and senior writers Chris Slate and Chris Hoffman has also kept the magazine spirit alive through their own podcast, Power Pros. With the 24 years of Nintendo Power magazines to look back on, any fan can truly appreciate the entertaining work that was given to us over the years. People like myself are still fascinated by the iconic magazine till this day. Nintendo Power magazines are collected amongst the gaming community just like the retro games of our past. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, now you're playing with power.